Now, our focus of today is going to be on how to create delivery plan of our project. And we will also be creating some um, work items from the feature level. We will also be creating user stories and we will also be creating a sprint. Hello everyone, welcome to our third episode of Azure DevOps Practical Tutorial. If you are a project manager, a scrum master, a developer, program manager, and you're looking to understand how to leverage Azure DevOps to be able to manage the progress of your team and track issues, then this video is for you. This is our third episode. Initially, we've already made two videos, you know, just doing a walkthrough of Azure DevOps, what is important from a functionality standpoint, and we were also able to create a project board. So if you miss those videos, please click right up there to get the link and watch those videos. If you visit the description box, you'll be able to also get the links to the previous two videos. Now, our focus of today is going to be on how to create delivery plan of our project. And we will also be creating some um, work items from the feature level. We will also be creating user stories and we will also be creating a sprint. So let us learn together so that you will not be coming from a place of ignorance and making a fool of yourself just like I did. All right, now let's go straight into the topic. Thank you very much. All right, so our focus for today is to create a delivery plan. That's what I want to accomplish. So to create a delivery plan in Azure DevOps, the first thing you want to do is you log into your Azure DevOps. And once you log into your Azure DevOps, you want to identify or locate the projects that you want to create the delivery plan for. As you can see here, these are the projects that are currently in our um, workspace. So the project that we want to be working on is the e-learning website project. So I'm going to click on this um, this project, and it's gonna this the project is gonna open for us. The very next thing you want to do is you go to boards on the left hand side of your of your um, ADO, and once you go to boards, just hover your your cursor on it, and then this drop down will populate for you. Identify delivery plans right here. So click on delivery plans. Once you click on delivery plans this is going to pull up for you. So actually we already have a delivery plan existing in here, which is the e-learning website. But anyway, I'm just going to delete this and start from scratch just to be able to show you how it's done. So to create a delivery plan for a project, click on new plan and then enter the plan, the name of the delivery plan. In this case, it's e-learning website. And then enter the description. So to create an e-learning website that offers a comprehensive online learning platform for students and professionals providing access to high quality educational content, interactive courses, and an engaging learning experience. All right, and then um, go ahead and fill all this. The project, select the projects that you're creating the delivery plan for. In our case, we already have it populated here because I started by selecting the project. And then the team working on this um, plan is the e-learning website team. The backlog, which backlog do I want to generate? I want to generate a backlog at feature level, not at product backlog work item level, which is more of user stories level. So in this case, I want to generate the delivery plan at features level. So clicking on the drop down, I'm going to select features. All right. From there, you can add teams if you have more people working on this plan. Um, and then you can go ahead and add acceptance criteria. But because this is not our focus for today, I'm just going to leave the acceptance criteria field empty here. But to add acceptance criteria, all you, what you have to do is click on, on add criteria. And then you can go ahead and add the criteria as, as you want, you see. So, well, um, so after that, just click on create. As you can see, we have a delivery plan in here. So now what we are going to do is we are going to generate the features that will that we hope to deliver under this plan, right? So to generate the features, you click on features right here. So once you click on features, as you can see, there are no features in here as of today because 
we haven't created any, which is what we're going to do right now. So we're going to create features that will fall under that delivery plan, right? So to do that, start by clicking on new work items. There are many ways to do it. You can click from new work items or you generate from, you click, you start from here, right? So, but in this case, I'm just going to click new work items. And in here, I'm going to now enter the name of the feature in our case here, going by e-learning website, the feature, the very first feature is to create user profile. All right. So I'm going to add, that's it. See, we have a feature now. So that's, that's how you do it. You can just go ahead and generate the feature the, as many as you want. Um, as many features as you want. So the second feature that we will be creating here is course content. And then I'm not going to add, I don't want to add to the top. I'm just going to add to the bottom because I want it to fall after this one. And then we go ahead and add another feature. That's really it. It's that simple. Um, course catalog. All right, that's the third um, feature. And then we add user registration. So those are the features. And then after generating the features, as you can see, we have four features under this delivery plan, which means that we are hoping to deliver all these four features under this particular plan. So now I would like to show us how to create, how to flesh these features out, which means that I'm going to focus on one feature and then I'm going to create user stories for this feature. I'm also going to create the tasks under these, under the user stories. So to create user stories for this feature, this is what we'll do. You see this plus button here, click on this plus button right here. It says add product backlog items, bulk and all of that. I'm going to click on it. So once I click on it, I'm going to select what I want to put there, which is product backlog item. So product backlog item, um, in this case, the very first item that we want to create is telling us already that the field title cannot be empty. So the title of the user story here for under user profile feature will be create account. We want to create account. That is the very first feature. So right now we are just creating these things at high level but again this is how you would generate the user story so you put the title and then um and then for so once you enter the title right you see this one this little person here um is where you will assign you will whoever will be working on this user story again if you are working doing it as a team this is where you want to enter the name of the select the person that will be working on this user story but usually when, when we are creating work items it's hardly ever during planning you know most of the time is before planning so it's advisable to leave this um, empty because you are not sure who will be working on this item but assuming that you're sure who will be working on this item just click on this the space here and then the, the teams under this project will pull up for you, the name of the, the team members, and then just select the person that will be working on it. In this case, let me select being agile. Okay. All right. If you have any, any tags to add, you will, this is where you add tags, you see, and then the state is a new work item. So here you can put anything, but right now it's a new work item. Um, so, all what you have to do is go ahead and, and just select the appropriate things. And then here is where you would enter the description. So in this case, this is where you enter a description following the, um, the layout of a good user story, right? Where you say, as a, uh, I want to, so that I can, you know, so starting with the what, um, the why, no, starting with the, the, the who, the what, and the why, right? So, um, going by writing a user story by the user perspective, you will say something like, as a student, I want to be able to create an account on the e-learning website so that I can access courses. See? 
So that's the description. And then here is where you want to enter the acceptance criteria. But again, this is going to be a, um, a, another video because it's going to be too long if I want to cover all these things. But this field is where you would enter acceptance criteria. And then if you have any comments to add, this is where you add the comments. So really, that's pretty much it. You go ahead and fill all the necessary information. And then for the priority, you click on the drop down and select the priority here. In this case, this priority is um, number one. This one is actually number one priority. And here is where you enter the estimate, you see. So in this case, the estimate will be your story points. So again, because we are not at team level right now, we don't know what the estimate is. We leave this empty. And then um, here is where you want to enter the business value. I really love this field because it makes sure that we are not just doing stuff. We are aligning the work we are doing to a business value, you see. So that is, to me, this, is, this field is very important. Um, and then which area is this going to serve? Is this work item going to serve? In this case, it's going to serve um, um, the business. Yeah. So once you are done with all of that, now you come here, you click on save and close. You see, now we have a user story attached to this feature. We can go ahead and generate as many user stories as possible. So to generate the second user story under this feature, still click on this plus button here and then select backlog item, you see, and then you add the second user story. In this case, our second user story will be to design um, um, account login. So we want to create account log in which is basically to allow users to be able to log into the account that's the functionality we want to create you see so you go ahead and do the same as i showed you in the previous user story do the same to fill out all these fields you see this thing is easier than using your mobile phone to be honest with you yeah so you go ahead and fill all the necessary information and that's how you keep your product backlog items healthy and then once you complete all the fields you click on save and close so now we have three user stories on that linked to this feature the reason why i really love this approach i will not just go ahead to start creating user stories randomly which is what most people do is because once you do it this way you are that you are immediately linking your items together you're linking your items following the, the um, work items hierarchy from features to user stories to task as as Azure DevOps um, have it, you see. So your work items will not be disconnected and all over the place. So it helps you stay organized, you know, and that way you're able to communicate clear and concise information within your team and to leadership which is extremely important. So now we have all these user stories attached to these features. The next thing I'd like to show you is how to create um, tasks for each user story. So again, following the um, Azure DevOps work item hierarchy, it starts from feature. Well, it actually starts from a project and then from a project, it moves down to features. And then after features, you have um, product backlog items and from product backlog items, you have things like user stories, really user stories, box and, and stuff like that. And then at, after the user story level, the next low, lowest level is the, the, the task. So right now we're going to create the task for individual user stories. So to create the task now, just come to the, this create account user story, right? Click this plus button at that level. So once you click the plus button, it will allow you to enter task right here. Look here, it, tell, it says new task, you see. So you are creating task. So the task will now will be the activities that you will have to complete as um, a developer in order to call that user story complete. That is what you're doing. So let me show us how to do that. So to do that, um, enter the, the, the title of the task. So in this case, the title of our task will be to design the account. So we wanna design the account, right? Again, you go ahead and fill this columns, this, this um, fields here as needed, right? And then you enter estimate. So that's it, you click save and close. You see, now you have a task attached to this user story, which is attached to this feature. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> All right, let's create the next task under this user story. 
is the same thing. So you go, so this task now is to develop um develop the account function. So that's what we want to do. Again, just go ahead and fill, complete these fields and then save and close. See, it's that easy. Now you have two tasks attached to this user story. Um, that is it. So that is how you create a feature and that's how you create the user story that's linked to the feature and that's how you create task linked to the user story. Okay, now that we have all our features that we hope to deliver listed, the very next thing, which is the most important thing right now that we want to do is we want to be able to set the schedule, you know, the anticipated or the estimated schedule on what, when we hope to deliver this or what we call timelines. And so how do we do that? So let's focus on this feature, user profile feature. So to be able to set the timeline or, or for the or set the delivery plan, actually, that's what you call it. Click on on the feature user profile. So once we click on the feature, um, now we already went through this, but I want to focus here and show you something. So you see the status right here, the start date. This is where you want to click on when you hope to start doing this work. So we hope to pick this work on the, um, our sprint planning starts tomorrow for this quarter, right? So we hope to start this tomorrow which is the 2nd of August. And then we hope to deliver the target date to deliver, which is the delivery plan we are creating. We hope to deliver this entire functionality by the end of this sprint, which is which is a two weeks. So we click um, the 15th. So our sprint runs from the 2nd to the 15th. That is it. So let's save and close and see what, will change. So now um, let's go, let's also set a, a plan for the second um, functionality, the second feature. So click course content and you set a plan. So in this case, we hope to deliver this feature in the second sprint starting from the 16th um, all the way, all the way to the 29th, you see. So save and close. Let's also set for the third um, feature. So click on the feature. So um, we hope to deliver this one on the 30th of August, which in this case will be the third sprint, right? And then we hope to deliver this by, by, the, um, by the 12th of September. So save and close. Um, let's do the last one. Yeah, so for this last one, we hope to um, start working on this from the 13th and then to complete it by, by the 26th. So that's it. All right, so now that you all know how to set the dates and most, let, let me also say this, these dates that I'm putting in there we are not, it's not just some fiction. It's recommended that these dates should come from an empirical place, which means that the team should be the one giving the estimated the based on the based on their history, based on the work they've done before, based on their estimates, you see. So they will be the ones to give these this this information, not some leadership sitting somewhere and putting this information on their own without knowing the reality of the team. Yeah, so with that, so now let's go ahead and check our delivery plan. So click on the delivery plan, go back to the delivery plan on the left side, click on the delivery plan there, and let's open our, our delivery plan. Now you see we have a plan listed. In Jira, they call this release plan. But in Azure DevOps, it's called delivery plan. So you see, so we hope to deliver all these features by the end of September, starting from this August. So we hope to, to spend two months to deliver these features, you see. So that is it. So um, um, that's it, really. These are the, this is the delivery plan we've just generated. Well, um, we will end here for today.
thank you so much so if you still haven't subscribed to this backup channel please do well to subscribe this is our being agile consulting backup channel um this channel will be dedicated for practical simplified step-by-step -step guidance and tips that agile practitioners can leverage to make their jobs better to make their transitioning into the agile career path better so you will really be missing out if you are not subscribing and following along with, with what we're doing here on um, three times a week basis and then feel free to also subscribe to our main channel look it up go to the comment section you will also find a link to our main channel even on the description box being agile consulting that's it right on the screen there it has the same logo as this channel so please subscribe to that channel and subscribe to this channel so that you will be covered 100 percent and again you know that we also offer scrum master training certifications we also um, mentor and coach people that are transitioning from just having a certification and looking to land their first um, scrum master job, agile practitioner job, agile coaching, um, release train engineer, product owner, whatever you're looking for. We offer all the services. Please visit our website, learn more about our programs and feel free to join our agile winning family and so that we can celebrate your success with you. Thank you so much and hope to see you in the next video. Bye.